hello guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl ashley if you're seeing my face for the first time i'm a youtuber based in port Harcourt, nigeria and today is like a mixture of different videos i'm shooting this video i didn't just do all this makeup for doing sake i did i did this makeup to mark my anniversary so this video is to mark my 50th anniversary yay and i'm also adding you know i'm bringing back my wine o'clock content and you know when i drink i spill so today's video you guys are going to be getting details that normally normally i'm not going to give you now so please stay tuned i'll be right back So guys, in honor of our fifth anniversary, we're raising a toast. And for me, for the last five years, I'm grateful for growth. And for the next five years, my biggest wish is, to be honest, there is more money. In today's Nigeria, more money is everything. What's your biggest wish for the next five years? Yeah, good health, because you know I'll make money. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, if you've never seen my husband in a video before, you guys need to go back and check my old videos. He's always so weird in my videos, but hopefully today's wine will bring him out. Um, so basically, we asked close friends and loved ones, basically friends, to send in questions that we can answer. And um, I heard that we have 12 questions here. We've not seen any of the questions as we're seeing them for the first time, we're answering them. So expect honesty, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So I'll start, ladies first, plus it's my channel. I'll pick the first question. Um, I would like to ask, how do they manage to stay in love all these years? Kosi, remember Kosi now? Yeah. She's asking how we've managed to stay in love all these years. By the way, guys, we've known each other for 10 years. Like, we've dated for 10 years, but we've been married for five years. So, Kos is asking, how do you think we've managed to stay in love? To stay in love? Because um, we came into the, the relationship circle with, uh, with uh, some level of seriousness and commitment. We knew what we were going for. Okay, and um, yeah, and through understanding and trying not to hurt one another, trying to be very respectful to each other's opinion and yeah. all of that. Um, really for me, I will not love. say I don't. I didn't get into this relationship with all seriousness. I was twenty-two. I was still doing young, wild, and free, but. Yeah, when I knew how serious and, will I say, responsible you are, it kind of changed my perspective. Like, okay, this is not one of all those relationships that you say you're kissing all the frogs before you meet your prince. Yeah. So, but at first, I wasn't that serious. But why I was, what I would say has helped us stay in love is because the foundation is friendship. Like, we don't carry it in our head that we're husband and wife or what this. The first thing is our friends. So I've, I have friends that have been in my life since I was nine. So why can't I be, why can't you be in my life for the last, last 10 years without any hiccup? So I'll say it's friendship. That's what I'll say for me. Okay. You pick the next question. Okay, coming from my guy, Martins. Have you ever lied to your partner to keep the peace of your home? And if you were to say the truth, how do you think your partner would? react to it you want to answer first uh no you go ahead um definitely there's no how i wouldn't have lied in the last 10 years i can't remember the most recent i don't know if i have lied recently um but even if i have it can't be for something severe or something serious but definitely in the past especially before we got married i must have lied about something that the truth would affect the relationship or would ruin the relationship. So I just keep the truth to myself. So, yeah. I think same here. Yes, I have lied. And uh, just like you mentioned, um, me lying means that I just want peace. I just want peace. I don't want, uh, I don't want, just like you know, I'm trying to be also very careful so that nothing dents our relationship and we stay smoothly. Yeah. So there are things that might just happen or, um, 
something, an event, not even, I did not, I did not commit the event. In fact, I was not involved with the whole event, but just trying to, maybe a third party event, mm. just trying to protect the effect of that third party event. I just lie my way out of it so that we stay cool. So, okay, yes. fair enough. Um, this one is from, who is the original? <laughs> this was be boring. This girl is not serious. Okay. How and when did you know that your partner was the one? Any regrets so far? How and when did you know? Um, I would say that I knew how what is based on how you handle things, especially difficult situations. I, I don't know how people can be with someone that cannot think on their feet. I, I think one of the first things that impressed me about you is how you can think on your feet. Like, it's, a problem can come now, and without giving it much thought, you can figure out a way out. It could be something technical, it could be something logical, like just anything. So I think that was how I started saying, okay, this is, this is someone I would want to. Like, you have to challenge me intellectually, which you do. But I'll say when... Um, um, I think after our breakup in 2016, when we got back together and it was almost like nothing happened. Like we, it's not like we, we started afresh. We just picked up from where we left. There was no, it's not like we're now trying to get to know each other. We know each other so well that even though we are apart for about eight, nine months, we just picked up like nothing changed. So I think that was when for me. And any regrets so far? Mm, no. There are some things, sometimes I question decisions I've made over the last couple of years, but not as regards to marrying you. The regrets might be, or the question might be, should I have gotten married when I got married? But if he's who I got married to, absolutely no regrets. So, you answer, how and when did you know that I was the one and any regrets so far? Yeah, I think it was uh, post-2016, after the, the short uh, break that we had. Because um, after the break, then I really realized that, see, if uh, this relationship, if, if it will not continue, that means I might be in a very big trouble because getting one, getting to know somebody and um, trying to also just inevitably building your, your life around the person, okay? And also that, um, we had that cohesion, that unity, okay? Secondly, where would I even start from at that time? Because I've known this person for this while, and the relationship has been, it has been cordial. No fighting, no, I'm not under pressure. Mind you, my job as, as at that time, I was just trying to make a living. So, I was not under pressure. Why would I now try to put my head where I'll be, I'll be under intense pressure. Yeah. And come to think of it, you are the most intelligent person I've ever dated. Oh, uh, I'm so, flattered. I'm blushing. So, then what kind of conversations will I not be having with some persons? And come on, man, life is moving too fast. I never wanted somebody that would be dragging me behind, okay? So that was it for me, yeah. Okay, you pick the next one. I hope I answered your question. The original Yang. <laughs> oh, <Naya> <laughs> <laughs> Do you still like what you loved about your partner and why? Do you still like what you loved about your partner and why? Um, yes. Yes. Stuff like, um, just like I mentioned earlier on, intelligence. And uh, you also proved it to me that you are strong because when you were running your, in terms of intelligence, when you were running your master's program, I saw in as much as you were, the timing wasn't so nice because we just had a baby, but you pulled it all through and you came out with flying colors. Aside that, the conversations we have, so I think nothing has really changed. Then when it comes to when it comes to organization, 
when it comes to telling me how you feel, opening up your mind and telling me, okay, babe, can we have this conversation? When you get hot or when I do something not nice, how you also find a way to call me back and say, guy, you didn't, I didn't like how this happened. As in, in, a, in the most respect, respectful way. So, assistance. Then, under pressure. I'm not under pressure. So, because I, I don't ask for both streets. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not under pressure. I'm not under pressure. So, uh, it um, makes me for me, too. I would say, um, what did I like first? First and foremost, it's just how kind you are. Like, I could see that in the first few weeks of knowing you. So, that kind of made me, um, like, lower my walls. So being kind, and it has stayed, like nothing has changed. You're still, like, it's almost as if you're even getting too kind. Like, if there's anything like that, like you're overstretching the kindness that, you know, I'm like, come, <laughs> hope one day you not come and tell me somebody needs a baby girl, so let's give out our child to the family. So, yeah, I'll say it's kind. And the second thing is responsibility, which is something that always pushed me to say, oh, I must marry an Igbo man, because everybody knows Igbo men are bent on taking care of their family, like, I'll do the hustle, just chill, and all of that. But apart from that, there's still some, it's not compulsory that every woman is like that. But for you, you take responsibility being serious. Like, it is my job. I will do my job. It is my job to take care of you. It is my job to ensure that the family feeds and all of that. So I think those are the two things. And, and it still stays the same. And I think that also confuses people. When they see me work so hard, they be like, ah, madam is flexing. Why the guy is working, yeah, but they also do not know the background that I come from, yeah, true. Uh -huh, that we, are. <laughs> we don't stop, we don't stop working, it, even if I'm no matter how hard I work, I don't think you're ever going to stop working. Okay, this is from my girl Rachel. Rachel is asking, Would you allow your extended family in laws interfere with your family crisis? If not, why? First and foremost, self, have we ever had any crisis, like, in the last five years? Like, is there anything you call crisis, that word, crisis? No. And no. would you let your family interfere? Hell no. Like, I am one for, of course, I have people that I talk to when my head is full. But in all honesty, I do, I have most of these conversations when I'm even done figuring it out on my own. Because I don't want them to influence my thoughts or my decision. So, no, for me, it's no, 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 no. Not my family, not your family. Like, it's our... If I must talk to someone while I'm still in the midst of that confusion, I'll talk to God, I'll sleep over it. The next day, I don't know, an idea will come or just I'll just feel better about the situation. So, for me, I don't know, Biko. What is it? Well, I think, um, personally, from my own side, I have a large family. And um, the good thing about my family is that it's like we're just too busy with our own lives. But that does not mean, like sometimes you ask me, okay, like my elder brother Melvis, I think it's almost a year I've not spoken to him. Yeah. But that does not mean that in spirit, <laughs> in life that we're not close. Yeah. So, so bringing family into, as in my ext our extended families yeah. into what we have, for me right now, and I pray in the coming days, that we might not necessarily need them because our foundation, as far as I'm concerned, is solid. Yeah. So we might not just need them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you pick the next question. From your baby girl, Anne. Do you still like what you loved about your partner and why? Um, we've asked, answered this question, so please let's just go to the <laughs> next one to okay. save time. Okay. We've answered it already. So, okay, let me pick. Okay, okay, Chuku. She's asking, what is the thing you liked doing before, but don't since you got married? Oh, God, we used to go out a lot. And I miss that. Heaven knows that I do. But first of all, where to keep Nora? Yeah. It's always my biggest challenge, where to keep Nora. So, yes, um, what we loved doing the most was always going out, having a good time, having fun. And we've stopped doing it since we got. We didn't stop it when we got married because we had like a year plus before Nora came. So we still enjoyed it. But after she came, it's just, it's just that's just what it has been. So is that the same thing for you? I think I think it's the, it's the same thing. But I just pray that in the, in the coming days, 
for months or weeks that I try to also reduce my yeah, you're, my you're a lot busier than you were when we just got my like it's crazy, especially these last two years. It's like I know they see your break like any day where well, I see I'm like take out the to the extent that when you come back home seven PM I'm like, Are you back? Like are you done? Like you came back home early. So yeah, it's, it's not just Nora. Sorry I blamed everything on Nora, not just Nora. Next question please. Dennis. Hmm. If you woke up one day and found out your husband had lost his memory, what would you do? Hey, God. Who else would ask you this kind of question if it's not Dennis? Ah. Oh, if I found out you lost your memory. Um, let me answer like in the romantic movies that I've watched. Of course, I'll stand by you. I would, um, I'll try and bring things that should spark your memory. Of course, we'll seek medical help, that's for sure. But aside medical help, I'll try and, you know, do things. If he's smell, if he's taking you to a memorable place, like somewhere that means something to us, if he's sharing a story with you, I'll just, I'll do my best. But, I mean, like she said, your husband, we're already stuck together. If he's to take you to Shiloh, I'll take you to Shiloh. I wish I'd find help till something is done about it. And if it never happens, then it's probably not entirely a bad idea. Like, you're giving me a clean slate. Like, every effort... From the past you cannot remember i will start afresh now I will, I will not give you the real picture that i want you to have about me so it's not such a bad idea reverse the question and answer well i think uh, I'm, i i would love to answer it from the part of uh, um, memory in terms of ill health yeah okay so that should also let us know that as we grow older as we grow gray hair yeah challenges will and likely come. Yeah. So what do we need to do that? That's also what we need to think. As, as you can see, Leaky, we've not been making really memorable, memorable times. Yeah. The last time we just did was Christmas. Yeah. When we went home to see my parents. Yeah. But we still need to make out more time. Yeah. The most simplest way because you know we do memories we we'll I think memories is, should be up there. Yeah. Okay. Be so that as we grow older and the kids get older, we can also hold on, hold on to the memories that we've laid. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, next question. This is from Nike, the person that introduced us. My question would be, what are the three ways you make each other feel more loved? Happy anniversary, guys. Thanks, babe. What are the three ways you think we make each other feel? Or what are the three ways you think you make me or I make you? However, you can answer it, please. I think spending more time with you. Spending more time with you. Um, spending more time with you and... Um, how I think you make me feel loved. Like you say, spend more time. Like when you're intentional about it. Not coincidental time that, oh, for some reason, your plate is clear and you can stay at home. No, when you intentionally say, okay, I'm not doing anything today. If heaven wants to fall, you should fall. I'm staying home. There's that. Then when you decide to cook, you've not been doing it a lot lately. When you decide to cook and you know me now, me I'm materialistic. When you buy me something, <laughs> no matter how small, like it's not like you need to break the bank or that. So that's what I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, it's also, I also enjoy the moments, those days that uh, every month we try to buy something. For yes. Like no matter yes. how small. Yes. Shark Ma has changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That's yeah. true. Next question, please. From Chris. Chris Edoja. <laughs> that's my guy, man. What is the bonus quality you received in your spouse you did not know or? No, he or she had until you got married. Okay, that's one. <laughs> His pressure is one eye. <laughs> one eye, eye. Okay, so what's the quality bonus one? Mm -hmm. And what's the best memory to cherish for the past five years? I'll start with memory. Okay. For the past, well, not five, more than five years, the day you proposed. Okay. Yes. Um... Yes, we already talked about getting married. I've already gone to see your parents. So it's not like it came as a surprise. But the day you proposed, I didn't see it coming. I know I always said, 
I don't want you to propose in private. I want my friends to be there or my sisters, like someone I love or people I love to witness it, right? But you now chose the craziest place that I never would have imagined, church. Right after service with everyone around, hanging around. At the end, I now got the audience that I was not expecting. Like, I feel like strangers, people that I don't know even got better pictures and videos than my siblings that were with us because they were not really expecting it. So I think that's my most treasured memory because I know how you're not really an attention seeker. So you really went out of your way knowing that if you do this thing here, there will be crowd and you know. And we trended for like, for like two, three weeks. We were on over 12 blogs. I still have all the pages saved. Over 12 blogs, um, even blogs that are not based in Nigeria and all that. So I know you went out of your way to make that happen. So I'll, I'll say that as my most cherished memory. But bonus quality, what will I say bonus quality is? Bonus quality, well, I would say, I know, yes, you're very family oriented. I see it with your siblings, even before we got married. And you know how I'm close with my sisters now. It's almost like I can't function without them. But I did not know you were going to embrace them the way you did. Not like expected you to be mean to them, but you're like completely open to them. Hey, I thought you would always want that. I bet they should, can they just leave us alone for now? Can they just, you've never done that. You've never been like that. So I think that's bonus quality for me. Okay. Okay, the best memory that I cherish for the past five years is yeah. having Nora. Aww. Aww. <laughs> You're getting emotional. <laughs> and, and the bonus quality there is how, how you take care of her. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can I your thoughts? Can I your feelings? Um, uh, I, I'm not seeing the name well here, U-D-E-Z-I, is it Dozy she's trying to write? It could be. Yeah, yeah um, yeah. okay, two questions. Can you guys tell us two things you didn't notice about each other while dating and you still noticing as married couple mm. and you don't like it and need to change it? Hmm, this is hot seat. Man. Okay, so it's one question, two things. You, not, you did not notice while dating, then you notice when you got married and you like to change. Oh. Man, sincerely speaking, at this point, nothing. Um, two is a lot for me. I think it's just one. Okay. I did not notice you were like deep into prioritizing people by yourself when we were dating. I did not notice it until we got married. And if I have a way to tone it down, if I have the power to tone it down, I'll tone it down. Because yes, I know Nicki Minaj said, selfish people live the longest and I believe in it. But I'm not saying like you have to be selfish, but you can't always put people ahead of yourself. And, and in my own selfish way, I think it's even beginning to upset me because you don't just put yourself ahead of other people. You put us, or me, not Nora, you put my need, your need ahead of, I mean, you put other people's needs ahead of ours. Like, don't, they leave me in front. I like to be front center. Don't give my attention to someone else. So I think that's just the one thing. I don't have up to two. So just, just that one. Yeah, I think I will have to um, say something about that because, yeah. you know, we live in a society whereby people are in need. People need a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I see my neighbor not having shelter food, Clothing for me is secondary. Yeah. So then why am I living when I know that one way or the other God is blessing me? And yeah. Let's not get the wrong impression. Yeah. I'm not saying food. Food is essential. Shelter is essential. Okay. But because of how close we are, I know some people ask you not because they don't have, but because they don't want to touch what they have and they come and ask you. Oh, yeah. And, you, and I see you constantly empty your account yeah, for but people. Sometimes, how, who am I to prove? Prove them spiritually to know whether they, they got Okay, something. I like that you mentioned spiritually because, mm. yes, as Christians, we're supposed to give, but you don't give foolishly. Even the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Uh -huh. So you reason now where, like, especially since you're a family man and you know that, okay, emergencies can come up. Uh -huh. So you will sort out your emergency yourself. So there are some people that should sort out their emergencies themselves. Or even if you're going to help, help with a little, not that exact amount 
or need that they're asking for. Like just give what you can without overstretching yourself because um, I, th I think, I can't remember which pastor, I know I was listening to one teaching one day and the pastor said, people that are receiving will never close their hands. They will always leave it open to collect. It's you that you're giving that will have to learn how to close your hand. If not, receivers will collect until they empty you dry. And as soon as you're dry, they are moving to the next person. They will not come and sympathize with you. We move. So I believe that, yes, be giving, you know, stretch out your hand and all of that. But with, with wisdom, with wisdom. So, guys. Yes, I have one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. What's the, okay, this is from Arinze Omosika. <laughs> so you say, what's the picture you see in the next 10 years? Whew. In the next 10 years, by the grace of God, more kids. Definitely. Um, a stronger relationship, a stronger, you know, bond. Um, a stronger bond, more kids. Of course, financial increase, that one is, that one is already going to happen. It's, nothing can change that. So I think what else? That's all, more experiences. I've created more memories, like just living our best life with whatever we can live then. Um, I'm not saying best life must be like we're balling all the time, but living our best life with whatever resources we have with, within us at that point in time. So you, what do you say? Okay, um, the next 10 years, I, I just want us to be in good health. Because okay. that's, for me, that's basic. Once I have health, I have the energy to go, go, to go and hustle. <laughs> in as much as uh, towards the tail end of, tail, um, end yeah. of last year, yeah. You would notice that I was praying to God, see God, come 2022, come this year. Has I'm not going to work as hard. But by the time, <laughs> bills, bills, obstacles bills. and all manner <laughs> of stuff, financial needs and all that yeah. came hitting me hard, January. Mm. I was like, wow, I just need to go and hustle harder. Yeah. So I pray that in the next five years, yeah. that God in his infinite mercy should continually bless the works of our hands yeah. so that we also, I know it's not a, a, a enough reason, but we also have time to make memories and help lives. Yeah, yeah. So guys, this, we've answered all the questions. I hope we don't miss anything. Please, if we don't answer your question, I don't know what happened. You probably asked the same question. Someone else already asked us something. But um, a quick one, guys, before I go, I'm filming this video, not in my house, which you should know by now. I'm filming it at TAF Studios, which, by the way, you can come and film your video content or picture content, or whatever it is that you want to film. It's an amazing studio here in Port Harcourt. Thank you guys for watching my video. I'll see you in the next one. And please wish us happy anniversary at the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.